Buying steam engines online, what can possibly go wrong? This one inch scale mini traction engine bought online via a popular auction site was sent to me by a customer for inspection to see how much it would cost to make it work. The results were very disappointing indeed. Here it is in all its glory and I knew that this was going to be a problem. The first thing that I noticed about this model once it was on the bench were the brass nameplates stuck on the smoke box using double sided adhesive tape. This is not generally a good sign. As I mentioned in the title, this engine was bought from the auction site that we all know and love. That's what the owner told me. I entered a search on the auction site for sold listings with mini traction engine in the title and I found it. It really was not cheap and on the listing the seller did offer the option of a 30 day return but because the customer is a very busy man he couldn't actually get it to me within the 30 days. When I receive an inquiry about a steam model I first of all ask the customer to send me photographs by taking a close look at the photographs I can usually tell whether the work is worth undertaking both from the customer's point of view and mine. And to be fair, just as you're looking at it here, it looked alright on the photographs, everything seemed to be present and correct. I don't generally give estimates for repairs from a photograph. I use a system whereby I receive the photographs and then I contact the customer and state my terms. I need the item sending to me so I can have it on the bench. Initially, there is a modest inspection fee, and if I undertake the job, the inspection fee is deducted from the final invoice total. The first thing that I did, and you've just been watching that, is lubricate every moving part. I was surprised to find that there wasn't a mechanical lubricator or even a displacement lubricator on this model. First of all, I carefully turned the model on its side to have a look at the ash pan, which the customer told me was stuck on underneath the firebox with glue. I'm not sure if this is glue or just very bad silver soldering or even worse, poor soft soldering to seal leaks. When I tapped the ash pan slightly, it did loosen up and so did the paint. This paint's been applied over the top of a shiny piece of brass without keying it and I can scrape it off with my fingernail, with hardly any effort. The steering chains weren't installed correctly and they were very slack. As I turned the engine on its side, one of the steering chains fell off, so I put it back in position and bent the piece of brass wire so it wouldn't fall off again. At this stage, whilst I was looking at the ash pan, I looked at other aspects of the engine and I soon realised there was something wrong. If you look at the large pulley behind the rear wheel, this is supposed to be a winch, but it looks like it's just been made. Plus, it just spins on the axle and doesn't do anything. The first thing I need to do is get some air into the cylinder. And the usual way to do this is to remove this plug, which will allow access to the boiler for filling it with water. I loosened it with a spanner and it felt very loose. Then I tried a screwdriver to spin it and then went back to the spanner method. I soon got fed up of spannering and thought it would be a good idea to look at the smoke box which appears to be a sealed unit, and it doesn't have the normal type of fixing at the front, it just has a lever, a single one. Anyway, back to the spannering. I soon realised that this was not a threaded bolt at all, it was just a plug pushed into a hole in the casting. And upon closer inspection, there was no way through to the boiler, the plug was a dummy. When I wind the steering wheel, it takes ages before it pulls the chain. It reminds me of a Ford Transit van that I used to have with a faulty steering box, but it wasn't as bad as this. Back to the air pressure problem. Maybe I can get some air into the boiler via the water gauge. I noticed that it looked a lot newer than the other parts on the engine. Maybe it's only been recently fitted. It's not fitted very securely into the boiler either. As soon as I put a spanner anywhere near it, it moved about so much that the glass would have fractured had I have continued. It was at this point I also noticed that you can't shut the firehole door because it fouls the water gauge, which looks like it really has been recently fitted. While I'm thinking about the ever-increasing number of problems that I'm seeing, I thought it would take a moment to apply some oil to the piston rod. I mentioned earlier about the smoke box. The handle is wrong. 
and it looks like it's not supposed to open. Maybe it's just been painted shut with a very thick coat of paint all over the engine. Here I'm checking the functionality of the differential and it's a little bit on the erratic side. I would think that hidden away behind the wheel there is probably something wrong with it. There are four good things about this engine and all four of the good things are the wheels. The strakes are really well made and they're fitted to the wheels very accurately. Here's one of the front wheels. Very well made indeed. The wheels of a traction engine I would think are possibly the most difficult to make. This is the crankshaft driven pump that takes water from the bunker tank and pumps it into the boiler. Well, that's what it's supposed to do. I connected a piece of silicone rubber tubing to the water inlet and opened the valve on the compressor. Unfortunately though, the pump did not make the right noises, although there was a way through from the water inlet to the ram. Behind this pump block, there should be a hole into the boiler. Maybe this is where I can get some air in to test the engine. The pump block is held to a pad on the boiler using three long bolts. All I have to do is remove these and I should see a really nice hole in the side of the boiler into which I can put some compressed air. But no, all the pump block is is a solid block of brass. The only holes in the pad on the boiler are the three to mount the block. I refitted the dummy pump to the boiler. What I'm currently seeing really is not good. The essential crankshaft driven water pump is a dummy. This pump block is a casting, it could be made from gunmetal, but it's not been machined internally to do anything. In this clip I'm taking the opportunity to wipe away some of the oil. These spots of oil ran down when I lubricated all the moving parts. With the exception of the wheels and one or two other parts, it's not looking good. I think it's time to have a look inside the cylinder to see if there's even a piston in there. To do this I need to remove the cylinder cover bolts, six of them on the front cylinder. I've increased the speed of the video during this sequence just to prevent any viewers from slipping into a coma. With all the bolts removed, I'm wondering if it's going to be difficult to get this cover off, but thankfully as soon as I touched it with the screwdriver point it fell off. And surprise, surprise, there is a piston in there. And I can see the steam port drillings to the steam chest too. But unfortunately, the cylinder bore is very badly scored, because after all, it's never had any way of being oiled. And that is it for the inspection. I can't take it any further. This thing is diabolical. As an educated guess, the build of this traction engine started quite well. The wheels are good and the gears are good, although you do buy them off the shelf. And also the cylinder, even though it's scored, is serviceable. Nothing that a relap and an oversized piston wouldn't put right. If the original builder had completed this engine, I'm sure it would have been fine. But as a wild guess, the original builder did not complete it. I don't know what happened to the original builder. Did he die? Was he abducted by aliens? Who knows? Here is the summary. It is not worth the time to put this engine right. For what I do, my hourly rate is fairly low. And to make this thing run requires a lot of hours, and I don't even know what the boiler's like. The entire engine would need dismantling to get the boiler back to its raw state for a hydraulic test with an inspector. The engine in the background is an Alchin Royal Chester that I've been working on recently. I had an agreement with the owner that I wasn't going to do anything with the boiler because it's basically going to be an ornament. So it didn't need dismantling to hydraulically test the boiler. The Royal Chester was worth the effort, it's a really nice engine. This on the other hand, in my opinion, is scrap. For some people this may be okay as a static ornament. For me, form follows function and as this doesn't work, it has no purpose. I would not want it as part of my collection. A final thought, if you're considering buying a traction engine or a steam locomotive above the size of a small steam toy, it's very important to make sure that you have paperwork with the boiler. Even if it's expired, it's better than nothing. Here's a final look at it, and all I have to say now is stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. And I almost forgot, 
try and avoid buying things like this from auction sites. They are not all bad, but unfortunately this one is. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.